Now to talk about the game that got me fascinated with boss fights. It was remarkably difficult to pick just one of Shovel Knight's bosses to talk about first. From the triumphant fanfare of King Knight to the romantic destruction of Propeller Stage, the game is packed to the brim with fantastic boss design, memorable set pieces, and creative movesets. Throw on top the different changes and extra bits in the two additional campaigns of Plague and Spectre Knight, you have a variable treasure trove of great design. Huh. Look at that. So with all this great design to choose from, I decided to go with the boss that left the biggest impact on me when I first played the game back in 2014. And when it comes down to that, Tinker Knight easily sticks out as the most memorable boss of the game to me, particularly because of just how unmemorable this little guy looks upon a first run. Setting up the scene for the battle, after fighting well into the second half of the Order No Quarter bosses, which is an achievement big enough that the game actually calls it out in the Feats tab, you feel cautiously prepared for the next challenge the game throws at you. Working through the entirety of Clockwork Tower's obstacles, especially through the auto-scrolling of the previous section, the level sets up a fair amount of challenge right up until the fight. However, when you reach Tinker Knight, you're greeted with some tiny engineer who is only about 4 foot on tiptoes. Now the way this boss is presented to the player, it really seems as if there should be more to fighting him, since earlier fights had goofy looking bosses too, such as the big bellied Mold Knight, but this idea falls flat on his face just as fast as he does. What comes after the opening remarks is one of the easiest and most bizarre boss fights of the entire game, where Tinker Knight just flops about his workshop, all the while throwing wrenches every which way. So you defeat him painlessly and early, and as the flashing background and slow-mo kicks in, you're left to wonder why this boss was exactly this late game. But just as this happens, the floor crumbles and leaves you just to ponder at the base of the arena, when suddenly, his figure illuminates from the shadows and brightens to eventually reveal Tinker Knight's very own battle mech. One of the best pieces of game design from this entire sequence is how everything plays out with exactly the proper comedic timing. From the fight opening up with him face planting on the floorboards, to the slow and quiet anticipation before the second phase begins, everything is organized in this fight to play out as a joke between the developers and the player, as their expectations are tossed about throughout the entire fight. This alone, however, is not the main reason this fight sticks out to me as one of the game's strongest, because even though the second phase is meant to surprise the player, it still maintains the premise of being a final review to teach of the level's ideas. For example, while his giant barbershop pole-style lance might seem ridiculous, its function is completely set up by the last half of the tower's obstacles. This means the player isn't entirely left in the dark when the giant robotic suit appears, simply because they had already studied for the fight by reaching his workshop. Shop. If this boss had implemented elements that were in any way not mirrored earlier in the level's design, then the entire surprise would have felt much cheaper and not as earned. In fact, that fight would be more likely akin to Tinker Knight's first phase, as the wrench throws and unorthodox attack patterns feel bizarre and out of place with the level. Although here, this out of place nature is by design for the big reveal. The level design doesn't just stop at preparing you for the boss's attack pattern, but I would argue that the secret routes and paths of the stage line up players for an optimal strategy for defeating him. Let me explain. The first best practice tucked away in the earlier bits of the stage is the level's secret item, the mobile gear. Now, seasoned Shovel Knight players will know that this gear can be used for more than just movement, but also to one-hit kill through Tinker Knight's very first phase. However, the game uses subtle hints that also nudge to this conclusion, such as through the gear's core design. With the ability to only use one at a time, partnered with an incredibly long cooldown before the next use, the item's limitations push the player to really think about how it can be properly used, a theme that's further emphasized than the other sequences where riding the gear allows for secret rewards. Finally, the movement techniques required for these secret passages, such as by chaining shovel pogo jumps on giant gears or staying atop the spinning blue and yellow poles, further indicate to more experienced players how they can stay on top of the mech and keep chaining damage without falling, effectively beating the match in less time and with fewer hits taken. Tinker Knight's fight shows that as long as the player is properly prepared, you can throw surprises at them while still maintaining fair design. Misdirection can be a powerful tool to use in boss battles, and can effectively create memorable and impactful moments for the player, but can only work if the boss can still serve as a final review of the player's skills with earlier elements and mechanics. All in all, the player's biggest surprise from their boss battle is that they're actually ready to take on anything. Hey everybody, thank you so much for watching this video. I had a lot of fun working on it, and if you have any other ideas for boss battles you want me to break down, then let me know in the comments below. But with that, I've been Skip the Tutorial, and I will see you all next week with some more boss battles to break down. You have a good one, alright?